Welcome to my shop. My name is Steve. In this video, I'm going to be installing this new digital readout on my Powermatic drum sander. So let's get over to the drum sander. Okay, my drum sander is a Powermatic uh, model tw PM2244. And you ask, why would I want to install a digital display on this drum sander? It's already got one. Well, the problem with this is that you cannot set this particular display to anything other than zero, whether you're dealing with metric or imperial units. And let me show you that. If I go down here, if I take this all the way to the bottom, there's a stop and it keeps the drum from, from hitting the table because obviously you will never sand anything to zero thickness. And I'll just take it all the way down to the stop. So I'm down to where I can't turn the handle anymore. And if I were to set that at zero, I can come back up and it'll read it, whether it's in inches or metric. And there's a scale on the side. That scale is, ru is a rough measurement. And this can vary depending upon the thickness of, your, of whatever paper you've got on. So every time you change paper, you need to re-zero it. But let's say I've set this to zero, and now I turn the machine off, and I come back to it the next day, and then turn it back on. Even though my head height is, I don't know, a couple of inches up, it comes up zero. It always defaults to inches, and I'm, I use metric in my shop, so I always find it annoying because I always flip that over and then I have to re-zero it. Now this is, this is great for incremental once I, I measure my, my sand, it, measure my thickness of my piece, set the zero, and then I can know how much I'm taking off. But I want something better. Uh, it's not what I'm accustomed to. This, I wish they had a, a way to where you could, you could crank this, run your piece through, measure the thickness, and then actually set the value. That would be great and have it store that value, but unfortunately it doesn't, so I'm going to do an upgrade. Okay, so I've explored various uh, locations for this sensor. Now, despite the fact that this is a zero to six inch sensor because of the width of this sensor unit that travels up and down, uh, it's about 12 inches long. When I looked at installing it I looked at installing it here primarily because this cable comes out this uh, toward the back of the machine, which, uh, you know, it's wherever I put it, it's going to happen. I also checked, I pulled the motor shroud off and, and looked inside there. There just was just no way to install this inside of this frame. Uh, so the problem with this, this, this is actually a desirable location until I got to the point where I was looking at my lid to change paper or to clean the drum. And regardless of where this was, this sensor, there's no way to get it down here to where it won't interfere and without contacting this hood. So I opted to put it over here on the, uh, the front of the machine. So I've already drilled and tapped the hole. And I ended up taking the clamp off the bottom because in order to get this, keep this sharp corner from protruding above the top, and I didn't really want to grind it, grind it off. So what I did, I took the bottom clamp off, and I reversed it such that the screw sits behind the sensor instead of below like that. The, the, reason, I, the reason I flipped this lower bracket is so that I could have clearance between this table and and the frame. Okay, I've scrounged around the shop for some materials uh, to make the connection between the sensor and the uh, sanding head. And uh, this is a six inch stainless steel rule. I think that's probably going to be the easiest to work with and bend, but I'm not sure that it's going to be stiff enough. Uh, the other piece, I cut off a section of um, profile, this aluminum channel, 
from a shower door installation. And the third is an eighth inch thick piece of aluminum flat bar. I think this is uh, based on previous uh, bending attempts. I don't think the flat bar is going to be the best option. I think what I can do is probably rip off the uh, aluminum uh, ribbing here, at least on at least this side. Actually, I'll probably rip it off on both sides. I may. I think since the setups are going to be pretty much the same, this is the profile I want. Uh, front view and side view, and I'm, I think I'm just going to work with this, see, see what I can come up with. Okay. Need to make sure that screw fits. I was trying to screw into this hole, but it does not appear to be threaded. The one on the opposite side is. Okay. <laughs> the problem I'm having is that the only hole that's tapped to accept this bracket is this upper one right here. And I need to connect it there. There's a hole there, it's just not threaded. So what I thought about doing was flipping this thing just upside down and attaching the bracket to this hole. The problem with that is this is directional and it will indicate negative numbers. So I called eye gauging. Uh, this, there is no way to electronically change the direction of this uh, or the, the polarity of the indicated numbers. And what they suggested was tapping uh, this hole. So that's what I'm going to do. They did not recommend disassembling it. And they told me it was either an M3 or an M4 screw. And uh, I've got some metric taps, and that's what I'm going to try. So I've got the cables routed. I just uh, stuck these uh, wire tie mounts to the plastic on the outside, and I just, I just routed them outside, provided enough slack to where the, this can go all the way to the top and all the way to the bottom. Now I need to calibrate it. I'm going to uh, set this at 
0.25 is the most consistent number I'm getting. So right now I'm reading 14.95. Long press to go to the next one, so I want 16. 1. And then long press. Long press. Two, long press, okay, 16.25, and long press, preset again, and the P is flashing. Short press preset to exit setting. Now why did that go 31.20? Ah, okay. Now I've set my origin for that setting to be 16.25. So now, if I go further down, or up, got that at I think this digital display is going to be a positive improvement to this drum sander operation. And I thank you, thank you for watching. If you've got any questions, uh, let me know in the comments. And I'll try to answer them as best I can. So thanks for watching. Have a great day. We'll catch you on the next one.